is going on guys one more say bring you guys a brand new bush gardens video and i am so so excited to be bringing you guys this video this is something we've been talking about for a while now and i'm super excited to finally be able to talk about it now i gotta start off by saying i'm a little upset that they didn't announce with like further notice about the whole thing at the globe theater last week like I would have so had been there if they didn't post about it before noon on that day. Luckily, it wasn't like a full reveal. It was like, hey, it's coming. Choose the name. It was kind of just that. So I was like, all right, well, at least you're not doing like the full presentation. They're going to hold that off for a later date so I can be there for that. But yeah, that, was, that just, I was like, come on. And like, yes, it was on the membership page. But I mean, it was like deep down in the weeds of the membership page. But yes, guys, the Big Bad Wolf is officially returning to Busch Gardens Williamsburg in 2025, kinda. So the park has started hinting at it over the past couple of weeks with the little like document series of like Tales of the Old Country. It was a three part series, I really loved it. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw the bell at the park in the vlog a couple of weeks ago, nothing with me rang that that was for the coaster. It was, I thought it was beer fest, I'm like, I thought it had something to do with that. And I was like, nothing in my head thought this is for the coaster. And then as soon as I left the park, Someone posted a picture with the wolf emojis, and I went, that's what that's for? And then they started doing the uh, little video series, and I was like, oh, oh, I wish I had known that. But yes, last Friday, the park announced that the wolf will be returning to Germany in a new fashion. It will be the longest family inverted coast of North America. That's a stretch. You know, you take your wins where you can get them. Just like Invader back in 2017, we can vote on a name. Now, in back in 2017, it was what? Battle Clash, Viking Raider, and Invader. There really was no competition. Invader was the clear best. It was almost like they had the name picked out, but they want to make you feel like you're part of it. This time around, it actually feels like we have a little bit of a say-so because they can't make up their minds. Now, here are the three options we have for the names this year, and I'm going to do my best to pronounce them properly. Don't come at me if I don't. Wolfrain, Wolfstorm, and Geisterwolf. You got Alpengeist? It, no, no, no. Don't do two guys. That's just not going to work. Wolfsrain, because if, it, if these are in German, so the wolf is pronounced Wolf, I believe. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how, that's how it goes. And I don't love that. I, I kind of like it in the theme of the wolf, the spirit of the wolf, or the wolf itself coming back to the village, like the, the wolf is coming back to reign over. I like that. I think it's cool. Volstorm, I think it's the best, objectively the best name of the three. But I'm not the hugest fan when right across from it, you got Dark Coaster. And you know, that's what, Escape the Storm, Brave the Storm, whatever it is. It's it's so close. It's so close. But I understand. Um, I'm glad that they're not calling it Big Bad Wolf Part 2 or something like that. I do like, since it's not a direct copy of the Big Bad Wolf before, they're not going to try to make it feel like it is. I do like that. Even though it's pretty close to the Big Bad Wolf. I'm very glad that they're at least going to separate it with the name. Now, I think they could have probably came up with a more simple name. But, you know, they've had a lot of simple names recently. And not for a bad thing. Like, I like the names like Finnegan's Flyer, uh, Dark Coaster, Pantheon. Like, nothing, like, too crazy when we've had, you know, Alpengeist and Verbolton. We haven't had a super interesting name in a while. So, having this one be a little more interesting and having the creative team actually get more creative with the name... I really like it, and I really like what they're going for. So I hope that, you know, whatever name is they go with, and I believe Volstorm is probably going to be the way it goes, I think it'll be good. But like I said, unlike Invader, this one truly feels like it's up to us about what the name is. But talking about the coaster itself, I'm super excited for the coaster. Now, a lot of people I get are upset about the fact that it's a little bit shorter than the original Big Bad Wolf. It's a little bit slower than the Big Bad Wolf. Uh, and I get that. There's a valid claims, and, you know, when I first heard that it was going to be shorter and slower, I thought the same thing. I was like, I I don't like that. I don't like that. If you're copying, it should at least be the same, if not just a little bit faster. I think a lot about Dark Coaster or Invader. They're slower, but they feel fast. It's all about how the coaster layout works and the visuals. That really is what aids in how fast you go. Because Griffin's one of the fastest, but because it's so open, it almost feels slower. Honestly, I really don't care that it's only 40 miles an hour. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's still going to be nostalgic. And I think with the visuals, because, you know, they did confirm in, it looks like in the blueprints, but also in the little video animation they posted, it does look like we're getting the village back. 
So having a village and you're passing by the village pretty quickly, it's going to make you feel like you're going faster. It's all about how you experience it. It's not so much about just you look, you look on paper. It doesn't look fast. It doesn't look super intimidating or fast. But I think when once you're in, in the elements and you're experiencing it, I think it's going to be a lot better. I think ever since they closed the Big Bad Wolf for Verbolton, there's always been this hunger for it. There's always been this, we love Verbolton, but we also love the wolf. And the fact that they are bringing it back in this capacity is really awesome. Now, will it have a dive to the Rhine River? No. We still get two lists. It's going to be the red track. And there's a lot of similar elements. And it's actually some elements from Drakenspire in the layout of the coaster. If you go look at the blueprints, I've had some in a video before. It's cool that they're still using some of the ideas from Drakenspire because I was actually super excited for the Drakenspire idea. And a lot of people are upset that Drakenfire is not being utilized in its own building. Like Big Bad Wolf is coming into Drakenfire's building and not a Drakenfire spinoff. And I thought about that. I thought that was an interesting take. So make sure to stay tuned for next week because I want to talk about what I believe the park could do in the future regarding the Drakenfire mythos. For those of you who don't know, Big Bad Wolf was my first, like, big cake coaster. I kind of got on it against my will back in 2009, right before it closed, and I rode it for the first time. Kind of had my head tucked down in the seat the whole time. I'm, I'm truly thankful that I got on it, and I can say I have ridden it, whether or not I remember a whole lot about it. I remember a little bit. So I remember the village a little bit. I remember looking up and seeing a lift hill. That's about it. But, you know, I'm proud to say that I got on Big Bad Wolf, and I got to experience it before it shut down. And I'm glad the park is bringing it back. And what is better than to do it on the 50th anniversary? And I'm really excited about the mythos that they're bringing around. Like, the whole story they're bringing around. Like, they're really going somewhere with it, which I'm super excited for. The theming at the park has improved. And I believe that this is another step in the right direction. We have seen it with Dark Coaster. They did a pretty good job with Dark Coaster. I believe, personally, they knocked it out the park with Loch Ness Monster, The Legend Lives On, you know, just revitalizing what was already there and then adding on top of it. And I believe that, you know, with the little video series leading into this, and they know how much people care about the Big Bad Wolf and the wolf being a presence in the park, I think this is going to be a really exciting theming process. Yes, if it was a coaster and nothing else, yes, the speed is not super exciting. The height is not super exciting. But with the elements that we're going to have, I think it's going to be awesome. I think it really is. And I see so many people that grew up riding Big Bad Wolf and like that was their coaster. Now excited to bring their kids and the, the next generation and introduce them to this new version of the Big Bad Wolf. And I think that's so awesome. It's like the Loch Ness Monster sticking around to where I even told the park president when I was speaking to him, I'm like, I'm excited that when I have kids, I can take them on Loch Ness Monster because I know it's going to be here longer. I think it's the same thing here. It's like, yes, it's not the exact same ride, but it's going to be close enough where it's like, this is like this is the coaster I grew up on, and now it's back in this new iteration. Now the big question is: we all know it's an inverted coaster, and it's going to be built by B and M. Is it going to be swinging? Because that was a big thing that really helped with the wolf idea was the swinging. Now I don't know, and I th and I believe it's pretty unclear at the moment, and I don't want to speak too much because. I I've seen the blueprints. I've seen the breakdowns. It's hard for me to kind of retain everything I read, and I, re and I read it over and over, and some things will still slip by me. So if you know for 100% for sure, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I believe Phoenix Rising was also built by B&M down at Busch Gardens Tampa, and that is an inverted coaster that does not swing. But I do know that they were at least there are at least prototypes for a swinging inverted coaster that they were working on. And we all know, and I've spoken about it before, Bush Gardens is famous for, hey, you got prototype, we want it. In the past, when we've been guinea pigs, outside of when Aerodynamics, outside of when they wanted to build like B&M with Dragonfire, outside of that prototype, our other prototypes have worked out pretty well. I would be super excited for us to get that prototype if it exists. With the way the inverted coaster is now, it's going to feel so much more free you're not going to be in a little cubicle like you were in Big Bad Wolf. So you're still going to feel more free and more into the elements than you were on Big Bad Wolf already. I want swinging just as much as everyone else does. But I don't think it's going to be that much of a heartbreaker if it's not. It is going to be a little bit different with the harnesses and how we ride the ride. I've been filming a lot of the construction process of the park because, like I said a few months ago, because I want to build a relationship with the park through media and stuff, I don't want to talk about stuff that they don't want out publicly until they announce it. So I've been holding off on talking more about this project. But I've been filming a lot of the construction process as I've been there. But it was kind of funny because, you know, you had all these teasers, which were basically confirming this was the Big Bad Wolf returning. Like, I had it confirmed to me a while ago. 
You know, I played coy and I played a game. It was one of the things that made me kind of immediately stop, like, talking about stuff publicly was like, oh, oh, because I didn't want to slip up and say it. I think the park is super excited about this. I think just there's this energy around the park knowing that the wolf is coming back. And you've seen the wolf merch start to just kind of build up over the years. And I've been saying, I've been saying, even before this was confirmed, I said, um, I'd pay attention to the merch that is being increased. I'm excited to walk into the old Dragonfire building for a ride for the first time. I'm interested to see how they do the theming between Oktoberfest and there, what they're going to add. So it doesn't just look super bare bones while you're walking to the ride. I believe they'll do something. It might not be immediately next year, but I believe over the next couple of years, we will see some type of development in that area. As exciting as all this information is, I know you guys are excited for the Howl Scream vlog. That'll be coming probably next month. Probably next month, if I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm doing the Fiends Frenzy Marathon. And just under two weeks, hope to see some of you guys say I'm super excited for it. We know, talking about the idea of Big Bad Wolf, there's still a whole lot of unconfirmed elements, so it's hard to really go into the blueprints and all that because we don't know for sure, and I don't want to, you know, get our hopes up about something or talk about something that ends up being completely different down the line. So that's why I'm just kind of talking more about the exciting idea of this wolf returning. And let me know in the comments down below what name for the ride you voted for and why you want that name because i'm super excited to hear your thoughts like i said mine is wolfstorm but i want to finish off this video guys by saying i can't believe i'm addressing this again third time this year and i'm and i know none of you watching this are involved with this stuff but i just feel obligated to say it's like look when we're at the park we need to act as responsible adults um a lot of people are trying to find solutions to what it could be whether that's these because of the uh, last incident at the park a lot of people are wondering, is it chaperone policy? Is it more security? I don't really think chaperone policy is going to help. And this this might be a little controversial to say, but I'm going to say it. When kids act that way, where do they learn it from? So if you're asking for a chaperone, who do you think the chaperone, what do you think their personality is like? It's probably going to be a lot like the kid. You know, security can be in a lot of places, but it can't be everywhere. So I believe as ambassadors of the park, we need to be kind of head on the swivel at times and try to de-escalate things when we can, when it's appropriate. Obviously, don't step on toes of security and the actual park ambassadors. But you want to, you know, when something's happening, you know, if someone has a question, answer the question. When it comes to this stuff, when you see an escalation, let's try to de-escalate, not let it get bigger than it is. Uh, I don't know what the solution is. I, my thing would be more intense security checks because you kind of can breeze through that process. I think there needs to be just more intensity and checking each individual that's coming into the park i believe that's probably your main thing because i don't think adding security is going to help because you can add as much security a lot of these things can happen under the radar it might not help it might de-escalate quicker but it can still happen so that's my opinion on that i think there's not a clear solution but i do think the park needs to evaluate their options when it comes to security and how we are taking care of the park and evaluate and implement something new going forward because this is two weekends in a row third big incident of this year we can't be having this at our home park that is so beautiful so amazing we want everyone to feel safe and loved when they're at the park and uh that's some people are questioning it and i hate to see it it breaks my heart to see that so with that hate to end that on a somber note but i wanted to make sure i address that but thank you guys for watching this video make sure to subscribe if you haven't already make sure to like this video if you enjoyed make sure to hit that bell button down below so if i had every single time up a brand new video to the channel make sure to go stream my new song i don't like my mind featuring the Loch Ness monster wherever you listen to your music make sure to go check out the patreon down below featuring a bunch of extended vlogs from bush gardens and an exclusive vlog only on the patreon and are you excited for big bad wolf because i know i am and let's get it. It's coming back in 2025, baby. Let's get it. Let's go. My name is Will Morris. Thank you all for watching. I'm out. Peace. And I don't like my mind. It gets me in trouble sometimes. It doesn't know when it's crossed a line. Can't tell what's up to mind. I don't like my mind.